that case, I'd like to welcome everybody to the Sustainability Advisory Board tonight on Monday, February 6th, and it is a joint meeting with the Council. We thank you very much for coming. Greatly appreciated. Um, I doubt there is any public comment tonight, seeing as though <laughs> I don't see any public. So let's move right on to the approval of minutes. Oh, no, how about we do a roll call first, Brandon? Okay. Sure, sounds good. Margie Davey? Here. Lisa Marone? Here. Pat Dwyer Hellquest? Vic Oliver? Here. Ken Osmond? Here. Bob Peschel? Brad Spambauer? Aaron Wojcikowski? Here. Yeah, that's five for SAB. And then we'll do roll call for the council members. Uh, Miller? Hansen? Mugerauer? Wojcikowski? Here. Ford? Here. Erickson? Here. Palmieri? Here. Thank you. And with that, we can move on. Hey, you guys meet quorum too, technically, right? Okay. Uh, approval of minutes from January 5th. Did I hear a motion? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Great. They are approved. The native plant brochure that we've been working on, um, we have a, just a brief update on this. It's kind of exciting. We actually had a member of the public come forward, um, somebody who actually watches our show, who knew. <laughs> and she's the one, yeah. And she is a graphic artist. Um, I have seen some of her work. She's amazing. And she's offering to do the native plant brochure for us if we give her the information on it. She's also very interested in native plants, so this is kind of a win-win for both sides. A question that I've raised in the past and want to try to confirm again is, does the city have any specific guidelines for making brochures? Is there a certain font? We'd like to put the logo on there, and how do we get that information so I can share that? So I did look into that, and the answer is yes. We do have, we have to follow that. Uh, do we have language a ordinance? Yes, yeah, it's, it's uh, in chapter eight or six or something like that. And you'll be emailing that to me so sure. I can share it? Yep. <laughs> okay, good. I knew it had to be out there somewhere because that was what many years ago we put that in place, as I recall. Um, <clears throat> did anybody have any further updates on the plant brochure that we looked at last month? No. Did you have anything to add to that, Brandon? Nobody sent anything, right? I did not, yep, that's still the same as it was, so. Okay. Well, if you want to send me what we have and um, the information on mm -hmm. that, I will pass it on, and I have a feeling she'll probably have it ready for us next month. Yeah, there was a couple of questions that Pat had had, I think, that I answered, maybe half of them, so i got to still go through that list that she had, you know, the red bulleted and figure out what the answers were to those other questions, and then it should be ready. Okay, great. Um, that takes care of native plant brochure. Let's move on to the Environmental Leadership Award. I know for sure that we've had two nominations. Have we had more? That's, I think that's it, yeah. Okay, and they were for one person and one is an entity, right? Correct, yep. And that's what we'd done last year with one of each. So I think we um, just have to get Rotary to sign off on that. We'll be able to do that again for State of the City. So I guess, Good. do you want me to talk to Rotary, or are you going to do that? Maybe me, you, and Vicki should just meet, make a meeting? Um, or is she not? She's not. Okay, well then if you know, I don't know anybody else that's there, so if you want to. Okay. You well, can loop me in, though, if you want. Okay, I will do that with Brandon, <coughs> someone, and Margie. Okay. Yeah, whoever whoever that person is. I just have to figure is. out who someone is. <laughs> it's a Rotarian. Mm-hmm. How fast our meetings go? Is this great? <laughs> this is great. <laughs> now moving on to No Mo May for 2023. We wanted to discuss doing that again and wanted to do that early in the year in the hopes that we could get more information out to the public <clears throat> sooner than we have in the past. Um, I know myself last year I didn't get on the list because I didn't realize it cut off on May 1st. 
So that was kind of a failure in communication, which we, the whole world has a lot of those, you may have noticed. So we want to be sure that we get this much information out there as soon as we can. Do we need to first bring this in front of the council to get an okay to do it again? Or is it, where is it sitting with the council at this point? Anybody on the council have a clue? <laughs> <laughs> I think if I recall, there was, uh, there were some members who had asked for some data um, and kind of how it went. Last yeah, I, I, I did provide um, a couple months after it ended, I did provide some information to council and I believe I also gave it to Brandon who, mm -hmm. um, you know, just the stats as far as if there's any violations and everything. But I do believe some council members did request to maybe hear from, um, I believe there's a, a person up in Appleton who's kind of spearheading the mm -hmm. effort and learn a little bit more of, about the program. So I do believe that council would need to um, you know, consider, um, you know, the no mo may a resolution again, but I do believe they do want to hear from somebody just to learn a little bit more about the program and ask some questions. So if one of the council members has a different, um, yeah, we did, yeah, we okay. Did, we did not pass it, um, to be an annual all encompassing resolution. It was, um, based on, I think, as you pointed out, some requests for some additional, I think it's, um, Dr. El Toro, yeah. El Toro. Um, and, and the organization that was providing some of the science data on it. Um, but I appreciate uh, trying to get ahead of it a little bit early this year because I think you're right. With the new addition, I think it was last year, of requiring registration, mm -hmm. um, it makes sense to get it out there sooner. Well, it makes it easier on everybody, and we like to make it easy, right? Yes. So I can reach out to Israel Del Toro and see if he's open for a presentation to council at some point? Otherwise, we do have a recording he did present to us two years ago. Yeah. Um, I know he has a website. Okay. But we could share that website with council, too. Mm -hmm. I, will, I will add that I think it would be useful to have him there in person or something updated, just because I know the request from our discussion. People wanted to know specifically in Oshkosh, is there, is there any evidence that it's having an impact? Right. And we still have a copy of that report. I think it was in our documents, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the the thing that Kelly had put together, yes, it was part of As our I meeting. Recall, though, wasn't there something about it that was lacking? There was some sort of data that we hadn't captured that we hoped to get this year. Um, okay. I think it was the impact of um, you know doing the no mo may. Does it? How does it impact um, you know the bee population? And um, does it need to go through all through May, or is it just a portion of maybe when? The grass or you know the when the plant starts seeding or that sort of thing i think those were some specific questions that counselors wanted to ask which is i know it's dependent on weather and our growing season say, yeah, every year that could change right? absolutely on when the snow melts. so i'm guessing that's where dr del toro comes in yeah hopefully to answer some of those questions because we don't have to do a bee count or anything right because no. <laughs> no. i'm not up for that <laughs> yeah he from my understanding when no one may kind of first got presented there's like beehives that are tracked around the state and so th those counts are i think what's used in that in some of that study yeah we received some anecdotal evidence that actually bee populations once we started this moved so, for example, we used to get small bee pockets at the city center building in downtown fascias and things like that. And that was much, much more reduced because they went to more greener, grassier areas such as neighborhoods rather than the concrete areas downtown. So, which is nice for cafe patrons out on the patio. <laughs> And for people allergic to bees, huh? Yeah. So I'll reach out to uh, Professor Del Toro and uh, see if he's available for counsel sometime in the next few months. So for, and hopefully he has an update with new statistics. Sooner rather than later. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, with that, that's all the other information we had to do tonight. We've moved on to our 2023 goals and our discussion with the Common Council. Um, Vic and... Lisa have put together a PowerPoint to kind of just give a very brief introduction. Um, we want to be sure, and of course the people who attend meetings are usually the ones that don't need this information, I get that, but we do have some information about how, what sustainability means. 
it's come to my attention that there are a lot of people in the city who don't even know we exist. So if they're watching, maybe this will be helpful. And um, I don't know which of you is going to talk through this. I think, yeah, teamwork makes the dream oh, work. <laughs> Here is the mothership. <laughs> Thank you, Brandon. Mm -hmm. And I just, I just hid those other slides that we talked talk about. So we do a regular slideshow that you skipped right over. Good. <clears throat> so Sustainability Advisory Board, this is our group. Um, we do have some members missing, but we just want to highlight that there's people from all different types of jobs and walks of life that are serving on this board. Um, we would like to define sustainability as the ability to meet the economic, environmental, and social needs of the present without com compromising the ability of future generations to meet their goals. This graphic here um, kind of shows the planet, people, prosperity that maybe some of you are familiar with and how it's all interconnected. And then to highlight the three pillars of sustainability are economic, environmental, and social. Really getting into what we do here as the SAB. Um, so we have a sustainability plan. Um, the Sustainability Advisory Board was established in March of 2009, given the mission to advise the city manager and common council on sustainability issues affecting municipal operations and the community at large, with a goal to improve the quality of life in Oshkosh by incorporating sustainability practices to meet the environmental, economic, and social needs of the present, again, without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Um, and then there's a link to the plan there as well. And then our SAB 2023 goals, we had a whole list of goals, but we decided to narrow them down to what we thought could be done um, in the quickest time period or what would be easiest to accomplish in our opinion. Uh, so the first one was to create and implement a sustainability education program for new and existing City of Oshkosh employees, similar to what the DEI work has done uh, within the city, just giving a broad overview of what some sustainability programs. Um, we are lucky enough to have a professor from UW Oshkosh on our board who would be an excellent choice to kind of give some of that education. Uh, to create a green tier legacy annual report, um, so to also create regular interdepartmental meetings such as a green team with SAB liaison to create an annual sustainability impact report in order for all those lovely data things that this lovely council seems to want. Um, this is how we would get there and this is how we would continue to do those things every year to track and trend. And then additionally, we are already a green tier legacy city. There are just some additional reports that have to be conducted with data and that only comes from within the city. Um, the volunteers cannot access, access that, so that'd be something we would have to collaborate on with. The next goal is to apply for the Energy Innovation Grant. Um, that would create a comprehensive energy plan for our municipal buildings. And if anyone else on the board would like to kind of give some background on the presentation that we have from MIT and how that possibly links with this grant, um, that could be helpful. So the, I'm not sure if the council is familiar with the project that we got pro bono from an MIT student, I think in 2021, but ultimately somehow randomly they picked the city of Oshkosh and he was building a energy model that's going to be free to anybody to use they just have to upload there's some gis data to it and it should pump out different things that uh, basically an envelope of um, things that could be done to a home uh, that would uh, increase the energy efficiency and you'd be able to see like how how best to get uh, your, your best bang for your buck kind of thing um, that is somewhat separate from from what this is though this is more uh, for our municipal buildings the MIT report really focused on residential. Yeah, so applying for this grant would provide the funding for us to do some updates and dive deeper into where the city's at with some of the energy efficiency issues um, and then future building projects. Um, create partnerships with local businesses and organizations to increase the recycle bin access to citizens in the downtown area. Um, this is one that's been on our list for a while, really trying to focus on those farmers markets. Um, and then educate citizens on climate change preparedness. So soil erosion, flooding, temperature changes, food scarcity, et cetera. Um, having a citizen versus city preparedness plan and then hazard mitigation plans as well. And then finally, if anyone has any questions, we'd be happy to answer those now. Or if you would like to email Brandon, that's something we can get back to you on. 
So let's say this is where we could start our general discussion. Or do you yeah. want to bring up the city manager goals now, or? Back to the first slide, quick. Just with that definition. Sure. Yeah, just, sorry, I'm just looking. The ability to meet the economic, environmental, and social needs of the present without compromising those for the future. It's kind of like saving the grandkids. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, do you, I mean, do you seem really heavy on the environmental stuff? I mean, do you just, as opposed to the economic and social? Um, sustainability actually is all three. So without the environment, you couldn't have the people and you wouldn't have economic prosperity. So they are interconnected. That's why it kind of looks like that Venn diagram where they're all connected together. No, so focusing on all three. As an example, like when we're talking about city policy on shoreline erosion and how that affects parks mm -hmm. and business access to the waterways and things like that at all it's both it's environmental it's business it's it's everything that usually are linked together um then it's access to those areas for the people to enjoy and raise the overall social fabric of the community so uh so when we're talking about uh tiny villages and we're talking about housing for the homeless when we're talking it's like doing all those things yeah. with an eye towards three all three pillars and so i think that's why the first goal being educating city staff um, is such an important thing so getting that information out there first so city staff us other people are aware of what sustainability actually is not just the environmental focus which everyone tends to, to lean towards um, but also the other two pillars. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Um, can you go to the slide that talks about the green tier annual report? Yes. Um, so a question here is, um, you mentioned that that there wasn't access to, to data. Um, just wondering if SAB or if there is, you know, perhaps someone either on the board or another volunteer in the community or an intern with UW Oshkosh perhaps um, who would have an interest in looking at, you know, our last, I don't know, five budgets, for example, line by line, because I think you will find that there are some activities that not only we engaged in but invested in that would fall into our sustainability definition. They just haven't been identified. Um, to kind of maybe inventory some of that, um, number one. And number two, <clears throat> um, do, you, do you see that also as a, um, not just a box to check to give to council, but also as a, a way to inform future grant applications? Well, actually, it's all integrated into our proposal that we actually gave you the council on having a sustainability manager one person to gather this data, mm -hmm. compile the data, use it as arguments for bringing finances, financial <clears throat> assistance to the city. But we also saw it as, in managing the dashboard, we recognize in the SAB that almost every department, including the council, has made efforts in these areas. And part of the tragedy is, is that the citizenry doesn't realize they're related to sustainability, because mm -hmm. it's not always obvious. You know, like, you know, extra measures taken during the construction of the bus terminal. Um, you know, uh, other things that we're doing in the parks in terms of planting trees and increasing green space. And um, almost every engineering process, project has a, a facet to it that uh, addresses sustainability issues or best practice. So um, I love the idea of getting an intern at some point, but I think it's more appropriate to be honest, and that's why we proposed it, was to have a sustainability manager who was focused on managing those metrics, holding the city departments accountable to them, and promoting their successes, and getting that grant money for projects. Because the city's missing out on millions of dollars available for projects that could actually help us balance our budget quite a bit better. So. Sorry if I took that over, but that's kind of, it's all interrelated. <laughs> and you'll see that reflected while the council didn't go that specific direction mm -hmm. in, in the budget. You'll see that some of that is directed to city manager, and there are some other ways to start to approach that 
Um, well, and frankly, we really need the council's help to get all the city departments and boards and commissions aware of what we would like to know that is happening. Because we have this sustainability plan that's been out there now for 11 years, not that I'm counting, and been updated once, time to be updated again. And I still will go to a meeting of some other board and say, well, don't you know we have a whole chapter on this and they've never even heard of the sustainability plan. How do we communicate this? It's not through this forum because people don't watch. They don't. So we have to find different ways to reach out. It's not unlike, well, maybe it needs to have some inclusion. I think I might be able to help a little bit with that. I, I think um, uh, the goal that SAB has indicated in regard to getting cities, city employees involved, I think that is a foundational piece to, um, to moving forward. I think certainly the council can um, issue an edict to the city manager or the city manager can do that with the employees, but I think we have a lot of employees that really believe in sustainability and embrace these concepts. And I think getting them together, you know, giving them the opportunity to talk about some of these issues and share some of the knowledge of things that are actually already taking place or have been taking place, I think will provide that support, providing the opportunity for education, as you mentioned. I think that's another fabulous idea. So, you know, we can harness the power of all employees and then they when they're doing their daily tasks can um, you know use that sustainability framework when they're viewing their work and it's not just one person I think the sustainability manager is a good idea but it shouldn't just be one person's responsibility it should be everyone's responsibility and they need to they need to really think about that in the context of their own jobs so I, I know that, you know, in my discussions, and Kelly was in a meeting with me, and Brandon with the city manager, you know, he fully supports your goals. And actually, um, just to segue. Can you introduce yourself? Sure. I'm John Fitzpatrick. I'm the <laughs> assistant city manager and director of administrative services. So, um, and just to segue, I know you had it on the agenda, Brandon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the goals that the council has given city manager Roloff, I would argue, I think all five of them uh, correlate with the sustainability initiatives that you have suggested. Um, and I'm happy to go through those real quickly and I can just talk about how I think they um, have tie-ins or we can just <coughs> observe them and... Yeah. If I may, I'm sure. just, just so, just to be clear, it, sometimes it requires us to ask for things such as information. Sometimes it asks, we have to ask for clarification on ordinances and things of that nature. One of the things we have been consistently asking for is a formal process because we are very sensitive to the time we may consume of city staff. They have a lot to do and a lot of ground to cover in a given day. So I think what we're asking for is something a, a more formal process to integrate that into the daily work and for us to maintain our respect of city employee time so that we're not diverting resources unnecessarily away from a budget that you essentially manage the city to every year, right? And there's X number of hours that needs to be allocated to a lot of different things. So. And, I, you know, I appreciate that. I think, though, that... Um, the group is really being very modest, I think, in terms of what they're requesting. Uh, I think that... Um, I think so too, John. <laughs> I, I, I think that the employees are certainly uh, ready to become more educated and work on these projects. And, um, you know, I, I appreciate your commentary about respecting them and what they need to do. Um, but I think uh, it's something that our organization is is ready to work on and Brandon you interact with a lot of employees on a regular basis and they know that you're a liaison to this group and you know feel free to disagree with me or agree or share your perspective on this because you have much more direct interaction with employees about this than I do 
So would you agree? I mean, free? besides our floor on the second floor of City Hall, I don't, I don't really have that much connection with anybody else within the city, to be honest. But, you know, most recently, I don't know if you got any responses back from that email, but Kelly, and, I, and I've shared this with Margie, but I, I was going to share with the rest of you tonight, that from our meeting with uh, Mr. Fitzpatrick and Mr. Roloff and Kelly and, and Mark Lyons, um, it was decided to, to move forward with the green team uh, idea, and Kelly sent an email out to staff, and so I don't know if we're getting responses back, but we are going to have a green team going forward. Thank you. So, that's awesome. Yeah, we are, Excited. and we did get quite a few responses back, nice. so that's Great. something that um, Brandon will be very much a part of and can hopefully give an update to um, the committee on a monthly basis. And so hopefully can. However, I think we all probably agreed that that position was, you know, it's still <laughs> probably crucial and, and important, but maybe the green team will be able to, you know, p pass along the information that's necessary so I can update you guys in a proper way and it can prepare us for that report at, in, in the summer. And, and for context, for council members who don't know, like <clears throat> how much time do you, are you allowed to dedicate to sustainability? Four hours a week. Yeah. And allowed is, it, it's a guideline. Yeah. Brandon yeah. right now is what, three or four? I have three, other, three boards. So. so, and not to mention everything else. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so just to give yeah. context on where our current resources for this committee is at and why we've invited council, so you can kind of get a, a better understanding of where we're at, why we need more resources, why we need support from city staff and council to achieve these goals. Because I know specifically with the Green Tier Legacy Report, I don't think we've ever completed one. Um, I did look back. It looks like there was reports completed um, 2016, maybe 18, something like that. But we haven't done it in a couple yeah. of years. And it's a requirement, isn't it? It's supposed to be a requirement to be a part of that community. You're supposed to complete it yearly. They did change. I was in a meeting recently. They changed the, um, the score sheet. So the score sheet is now going to be the score sheet and the annual report before you had to do a narrative and the score sheet. Mm -hmm. So... But the score sheet is more comprehensive, so it's going to take more effort to finish yeah. it. Sure. And I'll just add, going back to 2012 when I was an intern in the planning department, um, I did do some preliminary work uh, with, uh, I believe it was Dubuque, um, Iowa. They had a criteria, like 500 data points of criteria that they were utilizing, and it's probably long gone off the server by now it's you know 10 years plus but um, that was something that was the beginning of the idea of a an annual mm -hmm. report um, be, before we got to discussing the green uh, green tier but I just want to point out on the resources and on the city managers goals there's very specific language in here that council uh, worked to get in there <coughs> and that's to um, have seek outside contractual resources to achieve these um, grant funding so um, we, we've given that as a directive and those resources should be made available great I'm looking at something that's not that so I was confused I'm easily confused, Mike. You know this. I did have a question for John, uh, um, only because I'm looking around the table, John, and I think you and I are the only two here who could possibly remember this far back. And I know that it's because we're the youngest available. Absolutely. Yes. No, I appreciate you saying that. <laughs> yes, yes. But do you remember when SAB first was formed and Absolutely. we had the group? Yes. That we went to training, and it happened in, with city staff. It mm -hmm. happened with our board. Right. And um, it had also happened with the health department before that. Um, I can't remember what the name of the training was, but and I know it was before your time there. Um, and it had also, we, we actually did it through UW Extension. Right. They had already done it. Yes. Catherine Nieswinder helped us. Yes. Do it. it was like a 20-hour comprehensive course that we were going to um you know, we were spending two hours in the evening for a month, two months, three months. Right. And it was a way to help cities work their municipalities, work their way through sustainability. Okay, this was like what was available 
<laughs> okay, 15 years ago? Right. Yeah. But the problem with that was we all did it, and then it just got forgotten. Yeah. That's why I bring this up. I think it's marvelous that, that we're getting this going. But I do want, I do think it's really essential that we find ways to build it in so that it continues, even if the council changes. I agree. Even if the SAP and, changes. And if I could just build on what you were saying too, Margie, I think one thing that's different now than it, what we were working with then is, you know, SAB has done a lot of good work and has refined a plan, has developed a plan, has brought it to council, council's adopted it. And not all our boards and commissions are that advanced and or organized at this point. And I think um, that framework can be used. You know, the goals that you've suggested here as a product of that plan can be used. And I think the, the opportunity to educate staff and talk to them about everything that they're already doing and there can be connectivity between this group and the staff, I think that provides an opportunity that maybe didn't exist when we were just first starting. I think there were a lot of well-intended people, but you know we were focused on joining ICLEI, and we were there were so many things that, you know, I think uh, uh, pressures that were on the group initially, just as a because it was a brand new group. Uh, I think the maturity of this um, of SAB, and also the um, our employees, hopefully, and I think. They could still benefit from, you know, receiving additional education, so everybody has the same baseline. So we're all moving forward in the same, you know, in concert with each other. I still think that that is a great idea, but I think the opportunity for success right now is a lot greater than it was then. Well, and things have changed technologically too. I mean, there's different info out there now than there was 15 years ago. Absolutely. But the process may be the same, but what can be accomplished is so much greater. And as, as Ken said, we're basically just letting money fly right past us that could be used to the benefit of the city and we could be having, I don't know, solar farms down down or I don't know what, but things that we're not able to do that we should be doing. And I would, I would say in all you know honesty too, I think the culture of our organization has changed since then. You know, we are much more involved in employee committee work, whereas back then it, we didn't have those structures um, in existence, certainly not as much as we do right now. Um, so I think, you know, acceptance and understanding from our employees, because we're such a diverse organization and we're involved in a whole variety of different things, to harness that, you know, power and ability in terms of the diverse nature of what we do and you know use that SAB focus I think you know the opportunities are, are just really great so it's sometimes it's just a matter of timing and and I think the timing is really right now for for us because of the work that SAB did and also because I think of the maturity of our uh, culture that's just my opinion if I may for the other board members um, or actually for all of the board I guess not you Aaron but the other ones that are here, um, the and they kind of laid it out in the in the presentation, but the thought process here is that they are concurrent. That they, they you know one one gets uh, completed and it kind of sets you up for the next one and the next one. So ultimately, by the end of 2023, that ener energy innovation grant where they're talking about the money that's available, I think this year they allocated like 22 million dollars to cities. Um, that's the ultimate goal. We had the opportunity in the last three years that I've been here to apply for that grant, but it was determined that the city maybe wasn't ready to act on any of the money that we would have potentially have gotten. So the goal of the first two is to kind of create buy-in from the city in general. And then potentially, if we can apply for that grant and get the funding, we'll be ready to implement an energy plan. Or even, we don't really know what the activities are going to be available for that grant this cycle. But historically, they usually have $50,000 available for a, for a creation of a comprehensive plan. So that's kind of step one. It's the building block to help us apply for things in the future, such as a solar farm, maybe. <laughs> Who knows? But that's just so you understand, that's the logic behind the, the order. 
So for uh, my council colleagues, um, I think the goal is to p present this to like council at a meeting. We're missing three other people, so it would be nice to get their input um, and have discussion with Mark, the city manager, at a meeting. Um, but as as it sits now, as you're as you're reading these goals, you know, do they make sense? Do they seem you know realistic, doable, digestible? Um, as we prepare to present this to you know other co council members, you know, as you read them, does it make sense? Is there anything we're missing information? I think public participation um, would be really helpful on that too. And you know, um, Margie mentioned earlier, you know, how do we get, this is the devil, right? Uh, <coughs> how do we get the information communicated? That's every border commission, that's the council agenda that you name it is, you know, how do we get the communication? And I wanna say, uh, it's probably been 10 years ago, there were some, um, public um, uh, PR uh, students who put together um, some recommendations and uh, they, th that was on behalf of like neighborhood associations but it was kind of like a uh, like a group project where they presented like five different proposals and I just wonder uh, if you know the UW might also be uh, another resource to help with that piece of it because it's one thing to you know collect the data and you know get the reports and all of that but it's another thing to get it shared right and that that public engagement piece so just want to acknowledge that and I guess to respond to to Aaron um, you know I can't speak for the council they're gonna have to make their decisions on their own but but I can speak for city manager Roloff and he made it very clear to uh, Kelly and I and Brandon that he fully supports this we've already talked to our employees about it he believes that you know these goals correlate very well with the goals that the council's already given him so you know he's very excited to move forward as long as the council believes that this is something that they'd like to do I also feel like the KPIs that we've asked for in the budget every year um, I, I know for at least five years straight you know I've asked for for example when we get to the recycling budget line item, how many tons of waste have been diverted from the landfill? You know, that's kind of a, a basic <coughs> kind of thing, right? And how we're performing in, in that goal. Um, I know that, for example, the Parks Department, um, we discussed last year, the DNR had done an aerial map tree count in 2013. What does it look like to ask them, you know, when is that next round going to uh, be done to do some comparison? Um, you know, our street, our stormwater mitigation, our green infrastructure. What is our inventory of undeveloped permeable land? Those kinds of things that that are kind of, I guess, on the low-hanging fruit side. So I just, I just bring that up because I think that when we talk about creating the annual report, our budget kind of is somewhat of that but it needs maybe a little more um, specificity and maybe there are some kind of scoring mechanisms for there each is, of yeah. our budget items that, a, that would have an, a sustainability index attached to it yeah my plan when we create this green team the first meeting maybe the second meeting the green tier legacy communities does have a basically a, ta a table of items that I think are, will drive those meeting conversations because these are the line items that we're looking for in the report, in the score sheet, and so that's really what, that's the information we're trying to gather internally. Well, <coughs> yeah, thanks, Marty. I would, my suggestion would be be very practical with these goals. What I mean by that is we we gave the city manager direction to make very specifically, as the mayor pointed out, to make contractual services available to this group. Um, hold us to that, hold the city manager to that directive, and hold us to, 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 to us our commitment to doing that. In other words, each of these three steps, start thinking about, you know, what, what type of individual would you need to hire to help satisfy these goals? How could they be, how could they be used? Where might they exist? Because I think if you can identify that and make it very tangible, then you can come to us with an actual ask that, hey, we need a consultant for this specific thing. And I think the more tangible you get, uh, the more likely you are to succeed. 
And then that definitely comes with collaboration as we don't necessarily have the budget in mind of what the city needs for a consulting firm. Um, that would be an ask that we would have on the city side. We did leave these a little bit on the broader range just so that if the city or counselors had any um, input, we could do that. Um, we just want to make it clear too that because we are a group of volunteers, there is only so much that our brain power can come up with and we really are leaning on the city at this point for some collaboration. And then also I just wanted to highlight too, the UW Oshkosh, we are so lucky. They were ranked number three in sustainability when I graduated 2020. We have thousands of students there. I'm sure we could get one intern to possibly come and fill that table for us. But just the professors and Brad and the Sustainability Institute at UW Oshkosh just we really need to use them as a resource. Um, people in Oshkosh recognize the campus as a s sustainable place, so uh, definitely work with them in the future and see what we can do as a community. And that might be, no, get me wrong, I mean, I don't, UW professors aren't very talented. <laughs> <laughs> in general, as a rule, Chris knows this, he had me as a student. Um, but use that, the Sustainability Institute, if that's a vehicle, then maybe there's there's somebody there that you could contract with. Yeah, Brad Spamar is actually the director. Yeah. I mean, that's great. Again, and, that, and then that makes it real, and that gives you something yeah. to bring to us. And, and I would add, too, I, just to say no, right? I think, too, um, you know, it's, it's, I wouldn't be, uh, dis I, I'm sure you are disappointed that a position wasn't allocated, uh, directed toward this. But the competition is, is pretty serious. And, but I think you're going about it absolutely the right way. I think, you know, with the green team, and having the employees excited about this. And, you know, I know that uh, Kelly and Brandon are going to look carefully at the people that are interested and, you know, try to, it's great for their interest, but it's also good if they're, you know, um, leaders in our organization. I don't mean necessarily by their title, but they could be uh, formal and informal leaders. And, you know, that will really help, I think, um, create, the opportunity for um, these initiatives to, to take root, you know, pun intended, I guess. <laughs> and, uh, and then I think when a staff member is dedicated to this solely, I think that gives that staff member all that much more opportunity to be successful. To throw a staff member into the deep end and say, hey, you know, you're going to be the savior for us all, you're going to do all the work for us all. I don't know how fair that is and what the opportunity for success would be for that person. So I think absolutely this group is going about it the very correct way um, for, you know, not just quick success, but long, sustainable success. So um, I would also like to point out that in speaking about the university, we've had oh at least 25 capstone projects that have been done on behalf of of SAB throughout the years, and those are all available on the sustainability website. You guys know we've got that? Anybody been there and looked at it? <laughs> I knew you had, so I asked. Um, but with all that, we've had all that input, and two or three of those were actually responses to certain portions of the Green Tier yeah. legacy. They would take one chapter. It's to do it the first time, that's such an overwhelming project that, you know, we'd have four senior students working on it for a semester and they would get one portion done where there's 50 sections to go, you know. So um, we need to remember that that information is there though because we don't need to keep reinventing the wheel. And some of the information that, that Lori had mentioned too, um, I know it's on there. We've, we've had them do studies on um, tree legacies. We've had them do studies. I think we've even asked, um, them to deal with the PR issue one group had. So we have baselines we can go back and look at. We just need to remember that that information's there. Can you pull up the city manager's rules again? Absolutely. I just, to build on something that, that Assistant City Manager Fitz said, that second goal about infusing the concepts into city policies and city daily operations, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, colleagues, but I think part of that goal was about generating buy-in within the organization and putting the city manager in a position that, to understand that from our point of view, it's not just about having a committee dedicated to sustainability and creating a plan, 
but in other words, having it something that flows in everything we do as an organization, and hopefully that reinforces this and gets some of that buy-in that might be lacking. Not because people are hostile to it, but might be, as you said at the beginning, unaware of it. Um, I'll thin all policies. What is that? I'll thin all policies. Yeah. Are you familiar with that? I'm not yeah. familiar. Look it up. It's really good. Yeah, what is it? <laughs> It's called Health in All Policies, and it's a way of <laughs> looking at things and taking steps up to see what what the real causation is, right? Cause yeah. and effect. And I think, like, related to this, it's how do you operationalize sustainability so mm -hmm. that no matter what decision you're making or policy, sustainability is a part of it. Um, so there's some pretty good materials through the APA on that. Okay. So on the agenda, I did put our goals as, and we haven't done this in the past, but I did put it as an action item. I thought um, after this conversation, if we feel, if you guys felt like you were getting the support of council that maybe you wanted to vote that these would be the goals for 2023, you don't have to. We haven't done it in the past. so. That is why it says action, though, in case you guys wanted to kind of set it in stone. How do y'all feel about that? Sure. I would agree <laughs> and have it sent to council you know, after we vote on it, you know, mm -hmm. for them to have formally, we are missing three members. That so would kind of be nice for them to have. Yeah, then it would give you the opportunity to do what your next plan would, would be. I was going to say, we just, we just have barely have quorum for both groups here, so we don't really know how an overall vote would go, but I will say the people that we have missing tonight, you know, have, one happens to be the director of sustainability for the university, one happens to be a doctorate in chemistry that totally understands all of this stuff, you know. Thing is, we've got this fantastic sustainability board. I mean, you hear Ken talk and you go, oh, I bet he's the guy that has all that analytics background. <laughs> and you would be right. That is one of his many superpowers. But we are not capturing that and what happens is and we have several people with on the board now because the university has had the sustainability degree for a while now we've got people that are graduating and wanting to come be involved in sustainability in their hometown and quite honestly I think it's very frustrating for somebody especially the newer people on the council on the commission and you know that wouldn't be me but um, it's it's very easy to get extremely frustrated because they come in expecting to get something done, to see something tangible. And I know this is municipalities the world over, I get that. It takes time to get things done, you know, but I've been working on it for 15 years. I know you guys heard this story before, but it's still my my mantra. It's it's really time that we that we start moving. So I greatly appreciate the fact that the council members who did show up do seem to be supportive, and we thank you very much for that. Um, I guess with that, I would ask um, the Sustainability Board if anybody would want to make any kind of a motion at this point. <laughs> I wonder who that should be. I can make. I can. I'll make a motion to approve our 2023 SAB goals, um, with the intent that they'll be sent to the full council. Who? Who wants it? Ken can have it. Okay. <laughs> Is there any discussion on that item? No. Okay, all in favor, say aye. 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 Is anyone opposed? I think that passed. Perfect. Great. The next couple, are, do you guys have any last comments before we move, for, move on? Thanks for the invite. <laughs> so I, I guess I coming. just want to clarify, I think I heard somewhat of a form of a Jeopardy question about uh, what kind of budget ask there might be. And I think that, um, you know, city manager along with the council and the fact that you guys are, you know, been specific about the goals. And I believe that the submission of the, I think it was like a job description uh, for the sustainability manager also had some specific points in there, but perhaps, um, Mr. Fitzpatrick, do we have a rough idea of what we're thinking in terms of a budget? Would it be similar to what we did with DEI? 
that twenty five thousand range for for a one year kind of shot? We haven't really discussed a budget um, at all, and um, I know it's important, and I, I know it's something that you'd like to try to get your arms around, but I would suggest that we work on these goals, come up with some maybe tangible products, and then you can tie that budget to some of the initiatives. So in other words, once we convene the green team, we can chronicle everything that's been accomplished so far, and then we can talk about what things still need to be done. And then as um, Professor Ford was mentioning earlier, <laughs> I think you know, practically and pragmatically tying what needs to be done to the budget ask, I think will provide the opportunity for the council to make that connection. And if anybody asks why we're spending the money, they can say, well, it's to, to do this and to do that and to further these things. But to establish that budget before that, I think doesn't give it as good a chance as the way that, you know, Mike framed it earlier. That would just be my advice to the group based on my own experience. So if I can just understand and kind of restate what I think I'm hearing. So when you're, when you're asking the group for the tangible products, are you talking about like specific priorities out of like the sustainability plan that would fall under these goals or something else? Well, I guess what I would say is, you know, as I mentioned, I think it's important for us to have dialogue, you know, not only with this group, but also with the green team and see what's already been accomplished. You know, we had some very brief dialogue when we met with city manager Roloff about things that the city is doing that I don't know if this group knows or the community knows. You know, um, you know, one simple thing is our pipe at the wastewater treatment plant that says UW Oshkosh, you know, where we capture the methane and share it with UW Oshkosh. I don't know if people even know that, um, you know, in terms of what things that we do. So, and that's just one simple example, but um, there are others, and, you know, we're aware of those. So I think before we, you know, get too far ahead with um, an ask, let's just see what we have. Let's have that dialogue. You know, let's see if it's meaningful, and let's see where some of the gaps are. Certainly we would refer to the plan, but the plan, these goals, and then kind of an inventory of where we're at, and then I think we can, you know, better determine what we might need. Yeah. There's two practical points where we're probably going to need paid help, right? We're going to need, on point one of our goals, we're probably going to need help gathering all that information, documenting it, doing the proper inventory, helping us collaborate with the uh, Green Tier Legacy team, and at some point we're going to need help writing applications for grants. So, and the beginning and end, we know that those two points exist because, as you know, there's there's a really critical thing in, in public policy making. There is plenty of information. There are plenty of access points. Getting people to actually consume it and even more so care about it is a challenge. And part of the problem with our communication efforts always and our education efforts is, is that We'd like to piggyback on so many things, but as a critical function of the city, you can't overtake the waste management communications, for example, because people are only interested in dates and what I can do and what I can't do, right? You know, so there's, so there's help in that first step that we definitely need to do the city education piece with the staff, but there's also the community, to your point, because if you want to rally troops or, you know, we're going to need to get that piece down. I think the Lisa's point earlier about collaboration, Brad, who she keeps speaking of, or who has been mentioned a couple times here, he's on our board, he works at the university, he's the director of sustainability. There may be an opportunity with Brad or someone within his department or maybe a small fee, maybe free, maybe it's part of something that they should be doing anyway as part of outreach, who knows? Right. That type of collaboration could potentially be very min minuscule, right? right? I, would, I would lean on what Ken said. The big ask is gonna be for, you know, come, come fall when we're ready to apply for this grant, hopefully. Because there'll be a match and then potentially help with the grant writing itself. Right. right. 
So there's kind of a two prong. And it's yeah. my understanding to back to some conversations um, I had with the city manager. Um, also, we, we talked about at city council that the East Central Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission um, did affirm that they would have an interest in, in helping with some of these things um, specific to transportation um, because it aligns um, in their work program. Well, and we've worked with them in the past very yep. successfully. In fact, they were that group, a member of their group was the one who wrote one of the Ickley milestones for us. And it, yeah, the one that the council said, this is great, now you do the next one and we'll approve this one. I never did really quite understand that, but it was a different council then. <laughs> it wasn't you, Mike, it was before your time. Every once in a while, I don't do something bad. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I, I guess I'm not clear now on just on number one, which we keep referring to here. I guess maybe I'm just reading this top line that says a sustainability education program for new and existing city of Oshkosh employees. Why don't we just start with that? Is that what you've been saying? I, I think that we're using anything. the word green team interchangeably <laughs> um, because I think we are getting a group together of folks that are interested in sustainability, but at the same time trying to accomplish some of the items in number two also. So okay, I, but when we wrote this, what I envisioned in my head, and, and help me out if I got this wrong, is that we would like to have a sustainability education program for every person who works with the city. I'm not saying it has to be all in one big group, because I don't think we're gonna fit, you know, but it, <clears throat> I think it's important Someone's that- Someone's gotta answer the phone. That everybody, yeah, somebody has to answer the phone and be planner in charge that day. But there, I think a one hour commitment from each department even to have all their employees understand the basics of sustainability is going to help them understand what it is that we're looking for beyond that. I mean, are, are we going to pull one person from each place and rely on them to communicate that? Or would it be better to have somebody who totally understands sustainability and is used to teaching it and answering questions about it, present that, and th that that's more what I was envisioning. I guess one of the things that uh, Brandon brought up was, you know, doing that preliminary inventory of those educational materials was part of your first few steps, mm. or did I re read that wrong? I'm not sure. You're talking about from the last meeting, or? No, when you when we uh, maybe I misread it. Okay. But I thought there was a training program available that needed to be updated. I don't think no. we have any. You know, I don't think so. But I mean, no, um, Margie, I kind of see where you're tracking because I think it was this fall or this past summer we had like DEI training, mm -hmm. and yep. every employee in um, you know in the city of Oshkosh was required to go to a session. Obviously, we didn't all fit in one place, but we took turns coming in. To, you know into the council chambers in 404 so maybe that could be right. something we could potentially look at and for I could number one expand on that a little bit so the DEI committee was created our internal employee DEI committee and they were made up of people in you know across a variety of the departments and um, so we had some initial dialogue with them and we did have a consultant that worked with us and you know talked about you know their sense of DEI issues and um, and then also their feel for how the organization um, how aware the organization was of DEI issues and social justice issues and all kinds of different things and then from that dialogue and from their own experience and from their interaction with their peers you know then uh, they talked about some training that might be a good start for our employees and then that um, so we based on that because based on their suggestion and recommendation and the employee input and kind of a, a sense of where they were on the spectrum of understanding um, you know we started with some of our educational initiatives with DEI and I would think that SAB we could we could replicate that same sort of model where we would involve the employees give them and you know kind of assess where they're at what is their awareness what is their interest and then um, map out some sort of a training program and then implement it 
So are we talking all employees or select employees that would be speaking for a group? I think at first we would assemble the green team and then we would consult with them and ask their thoughts as representatives of the employee population. And we could, beyond that, if we needed more information, we could survey our employees. And then we could determine, also in concert, also in concert with a consultant, if we wanted to hire someone to help us facilitate that dialogue, then we could determine what sort of training might be necessary. So I think the 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 end goal is to make it or part, all employees. Yeah, to make it part of onboarding. Like that won't happen right away, but that's where the green team. So it would be both. It's a combination of both because the trainings, you know, will happen sporadically, but we need that green team to make sure things are continuously happening within the departments. But I think like an end goal would eventually be making it part of the onboarding process for employees. Right. One hour Are we video flipping or the order of our goals? Because these oh. were intentionally laid out in a specific order. I think they can go either way, right? So they gave a good example about DEI, D -E right? DEI? Yeah. <laughs> and how it worked that way. So they don't, they don't necessarily need to be flipped. They could easily go that way as well. But, I, you know, sure. they could go either way, and I think it's going to work. And, and that's not the only way. It's just one way. But I think the whole idea is to try to engage the employees, you know, have them have the same sort of passion that this group has about sustainability, and then move that initiative forward inside the organization. So that's, that's the idea. There's going to be a lot of different training opportunities, so that group can potentially narrow down based on their feel for their department and their uh, uh, counterparts, you know, what, what everyone's ability of understanding is of, of sustainability. I think for all employees there would be a base, you know, mm -hmm. a base of um, training as Aaron is talking about. But there are going to be some people that, you know, on their awareness of sustainability issues are going to just maybe more advanced. They just may have had the opportunity to be exposed to more concepts and they're maybe going to want things that are going to be more advanced. So I think it's going to take, we're going to have to think about, you know, how we can bring everybody along so everybody to, so uh, the organization feels like they're important, they're involved, and, um, and also, you know, make sure that others who are going to be leaders who don't, do have more experience are engaged also. So I think, you know, it's a, it's I, not going to be an easy process. Done, but I am concerned that everybody needs sustainability 101. Mm -hmm. I think that everyone in this room could benefit from having sustainability 101 just so that we know when we say Absolutely. a three-legged stool of sustainability, what right. do we mean and yeah. why isn't it all environmental? Right. Well, because it won't stand up. A stool won't stand up on one leg. Sure. So I think that's really important to make sure that, I mean, it doesn't have to be a long thing. I understand that it's costly. It, it takes employee time well, and I, employees are being paid to be there. I would I say it's, it's an investment, right? I mean, we well, talked about the benefits, <clears throat> exactly. but it's an investment in their understanding. And then once they understand the value, then I think they can apply it. And, and that's where the power of harnessing the employees is going to come into play. Right. But I think the point we're trying to make and what I, what I think Marty's trying to say here is that we need that 101 first, and then through the green team, we can create additional or furthering education based on specific, specific. departmental needs, yeah. correct? And I'm not... I do I'm think it's really important that that 101 occur with every single employee of the city first, and then we can roll into that, which again, which why I was getting to the point of the way these were ordered, <laughs> was very intentional and very specific for that purpose. Step one is 101. Step two, we can always dig into with that green tier legacy team, that green team of getting into specifics and departmental specifics and how do we grow and how do you make 102 and 202 and et cetera. But just well, and for the other piece of this too isn't just about existing staff, right? I mean, Correct. I, I would imagine that the um, hiring practices and the retention and attraction and all of the things that mm -hmm. we're looking at and trying to compete with other city governments for employees that um, the opportunity to, you know, if there's a choice given, 
for someone to stay in Oshkosh who's graduated or, or to attract someone from Stevens Point who's gotten their sustain, whichever, that given the choice between, I don't know, us and, I don't want to pick on Kakan, I'm just saying, um, <laughs> that, they, that that may be an attraction that helps achieve some other sustainable things along the lines of our um, staffing as well. I think we're all seeing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not coming across the right way. I, uh, all I'm saying is I think that we should involve that employee group in the construction of that you know, uh, sustainability one-on-one. I, I don't think we should just say here it is. You know, go forth and you know share it. You know, with the masses. I think involving them in that process a little bit would would help facilitate support. I think just my point. one thing that might help um, is as that group meets, um, you know, maybe getting information about like what they've kind of what their decisions are, what they're kind of coming to in terms of maybe even like a timeline, um, what they're proposing, just to kind of work alongside us, so Absolutely. we're kind of aware of what's happening. Yeah. But I also think there's an element to this when you're when you're involving those representatives and you find out what questions they have about sustainability, we can make sure one on one addresses mm -hmm. those questions. I think that's a really mm -hmm. important thing because they're all coming at it from different perspectives. Excellent point. Different levels. And we have to make sure that one on one hits the mark right away and we can build on it. So um, so there's a kind of muddled steps that are Exactly. I <laughs> think you said it much better than I was trying to. I think just to, we want everyone to be engaged, and we know that everyone is at a different level. So how do we engage them in a way where we are making sure that we pique everyone's interest? Those that know nothing about SAB and those that are maybe more advanced. And I think the way to do that is just to, to consult with that group a little bit, get a pulse, on what they think and their dialogue with employees and they're going to be excited because they're volunteering to participate in this group and I think they're going to have dialogue with their co-workers right about this for sure it's mm -hmm. going to happen so I think you know making sure that they're involved and they're excited and they're um, part of this process invested I think in it. invested yeah. in it excited about it can't help but you know inside the organization I think fuel the desire for people to participate. And will we have a uh, sustainability one-on-one? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's just how do we do it in a way where we can engage the most employees? That's yeah. what I think. Because yeah. we definitely don't want it to feel like something top-down, mm -hmm. mandate. Mm -hmm. We want it to feel like, yeah, let's get in right. on board with this. So. Absolutely. And, and it's already been successful with what you've been doing with DEI, how they've I been slowly so. implementing it in trainings and such like that. I think so. And I think it will happen with DEI training. as well, to uh, Lori's point, is DEI has already had an impact on how the hiring practice goes, how you, the questions that are asked, the interview process and all that, and it's also having an impact on who we attract. So I, I'm hoping that has the same thing like every candidate that every forever applies for any position is sustainability minded before they even get here <laughs> you know because of what we are so that would be freaking awesome that would be awesome <laughs> if we could go raid stevens point <laughs> we have a good department here a great department all right so any final comments <laughs> are we good Great conversation. I just want to share one little story from a couple of years ago. I um, was talking to a family um, downtown here, and um, the the discussion was centered around um, they had had moved here uh, to access more water, okay, for recreation. Um, but um, after several years, they were moving back to. Stevens Point because it matched their lifestyle and their values more than what was happening here. I want me personally as mayor, as representative, as a citizen here in Oshkosh, I want it to be the reverse. I want, and I, I, I tease the state representative over there in that district, um, I want folks to be coming here because we're leading that and, and that is starting with our storytelling too. So, 
appreciate all the work you guys have done and the work that's yet to be done. Thank you, Madam Mayor, Representative, <laughs> and all your other titles. I think you're mom and grandma, too. Um, Mike, I had a question for you. How are you feeling about all this? You've been kind of having some different. Me? Yeah, you, Mike. You're oh, the only good. Mike in here. No, I'm listening. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at this, and I have. Is it a good thing? What? Yes. What is? What is most likely to be successful and to be accepted? And that's why I keep going back to, especially when you're asking for resources, to make them tied to things that you need to be as specific as possible. Like, don't negotiate with yourselves. Tell us what you need. Tell us what you want. But if it just comes out and said, hey, we want $50,000 and we'll figure out what to do with it, that's going to go over like a lead balloon. And not that you would do that, but that's that's the only advice I have. But yeah, no, it's good stuff. Or a spy balloon. Uh, <laughs> or a spy balloon. balloon. <laughs> oh, no, right? That was cool. That made my day for like four days. And we're better than Stevens Point. If we had trout streams, everyone would come here. That's the only problem. But that's not our problem. <laughs> okay, we're moving on then. <laughs> Our agenda items for future meetings, we do have down the native plant brochure, which I hope we're able to bring back next week, uh, next month. I'm sorry, not that fast. Um, no more May. We will see what we can do about getting someone in here to speak to that to the council, not to us. We, we got it down. Um, my hope is that, frankly, is that the council will not only approve that, but maybe would even fund some signs so that we had more signs that say no more may so that people understand it's not going you know everything around here goes by lawn signs right mm -hmm. you guys realize that so if people understand why your grass is growing longer they're going to be more tolerant and more invested in it now, last year the 500 signs we got were donated so and that was yes, out of israel del toro's uh, his, uh, my understanding he, he bought like 5,000 signs out of his own yep. pocket so he did this is a very generous donation. Yes. But if we like the program and we want to keep it up, we can do that. Um, and then as far as the Oshkosh Ecological Restoration, um, that's for a report. That's the new name of the Friends of Menominee Park, where the pilot project that's no longer a pilot um, is taking place and the other two sites that have grown off of that. So there is a new team working on that. They've um, renamed themselves and are working on this, and I will try to have someone come in to actually give us a report on that. Is there anything else that you would like to see? Brandon. Do we want uh, to have environmental leadership on there again with who they are, who they are or do we not do it in the past? I, I don't think recall. we need to. Do okay, it's sounds in good. May. I mean, it's in March, March. and we're going to have our... Um, State of the city? State of the, <laughs> right the week after. after. We'll be learning about it right okay. now. Anyway. So we um, don't have to do, like, the regular approval process since... Or I don't know how that works. Um, in the past, we have only um, promoted it gotcha. through sustainability. Yeah. We, we didn't because we are partnering with Rotary on this. Okay. So and it's really Rotary's program that they've asked mm -hmm. us for help. With, okay. So. Anything else anyone has? All right then. Our next meeting will be on Monday, March sixth. Uh -huh. That's the day my sister's getting older. <laughs> <laughs> um, and. If there's nothing else, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion, motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we're adjourned.